1690. Hey there, my name is Allison O'Reilly. I am the program director here at CJLO 1690 AM. And today we are sitting in the CJLO broadcast booth and we are going to go through the CJLO board. Um, in this video, we are going to explain everything that this board does as well as the equipment that you may use when doing your radio show. Now, this video is intended for educational purposes for those new trainees that are new to CJLO, but also this may be useful for those older DJs who may need a quick refresher. So let's get into it. All right, so this is the CJLO board that we have. And as you can see, it has 12 inputs. Um, I like to call these faders. Some people call them channels. Some people call them pods. But in this video, I will call them faders. So each one of these faders has an input um, to a piece of equipment inside this room. And how these faders work is you find the piece of equipment you want to use, whether it's the microphones or the CD players. You find the, the fader that you want. So let's go for CD. You're going to press it on and you're going to bring up the volume to the desired volume that you want. So that's how each one of these faders will work. Now, if you were to look up here at the top, you'll see that all of these A buttons are on, and that is because um, each one of these inputs we keep in line A, just for simplicity's sake. This board has the capability to have up to 24 channels, but because we don't need 24 inputs to do a radio show, we keep everything in line A, just to make it nice and simple. So when you come in, all those A buttons should be on. Now, before I get into what all of the faders do, first I'd like to talk a little bit about these VU meters up here, because they are very important. This is what measures the volume of the output of your show. So you always wanna make sure that you're watching these levels. So these VU meters, measure the sound in what we call dBs. And the sweet spot you want the needle to achieve is in between minus three and zero. You wanna make sure that that needle is approaching zero because that is the sweet spot. You don't want the needle to spend too much time in the red. If it spends too much time in the red, you'll see it clips and this red light will turn on. Whenever you see that red light, you wanna make sure that you adjust your volume and bring it back down so that it is in that desirable spot. Now I will go through and we will go through each one of these channels and explain what, uh, what it's attached to. So the very first three faders on the board that is closest to the left are the microphones. You'll see that it has the label CR mic, mic one and mic two. So the CR mic is the main microphone that is used by the host of a show. That is the microphone that is right in front of you. And this is the one that usually whoever is doing controlling the board, this is the mic that you will use. It can turn around as well, but this is the main mic. And for that reason, we keep it in fader one, just so it's nice and close and easily accessible. Now, mic one is in fader two. And mic one is the microphone that's in the middle of the board right here. And then on mic two, we keep in fader three. And then that is the one that's furthest away from the board right here. So the microphones are actually laid out in order um, on the board as the way that they're laid out on the desk, which makes it nice and easy for you to visualize. So if you want to turn on the furthest away mic, you turn on the microphone that is the furthest away, mic two. There we go. An interesting thing to note about the microphones is that when you turn them on, the sound on the board will cut off. And that is to prevent any feedback from happening. So just something to keep in mind. Now next, we will go into the CD players. So the CD players are in channels four and five and we have two of them. So CD1 is the CD player that's furthest away from the board. And it's this one right here that I'm gesturing to. And then this one right here is CD2, which is in fader five. 
They are very easy to use. All you have to do is you've got to make sure that the CD loads from the bottom and that the track search is right here. The play button's in the corner. And if you want to eject, it's in the top corner right there. Now, next, um, we don't have anything in Fader 6. Maybe someday we will put something in there, but for now it is empty. That's why there's no label. Fader 7 is our automation computer, and that is the computer screen that you will see to the left of you. Now, as you see here, this computer is running a program called Radio DJ. This is our automation software, and this is what allows us to broadcast 24-7. So this computer will always be going, it will always be playing something, and whenever there is no one in the booth or no one doing a show, Fader 7 must be up. So when you come into the room, you will be bringing down Fader 7 before you start your show, and typically when your show is done, you'll be bringing up Fader 7. You cannot leave this room without something playing, so it's a good thing that we have um, the automation computer that's always playing something. So number eight, fader number eight is another computer. We labeled that the DJ computer. That is the computer that is right up above here. And this is the computer that you will likely be using the most. So on this computer is how you will play advertisements, station IDs, show promos, as well as any of the music that you wanna play off of the internet or anything that you want to play from CJLO's music library. You can access it on this computer. Um, it is a very um, useful tool and you'll probably be using it the most. So, Fader 8 is the DJ computer. So whenever you want to play something, you'll be bringing up Fader 8. Fader 9 is the turntables. And it's labeled on the board as Disco Mix, <laughs> which always gets questions. But Disco Mix is what we use for our two turntables that we have here on the board. So I'll just quickly go over them because they also require an additional step and that's different than the other stuff. So if you want to play a, a record here at CGLO, of course you load the record, you turn on the record player with that switch and you play it as normal. Um, you know, if you are not aware of how to play a record, ask your program director and they will tell you how to do that. But before you play a record, you want to make sure that this Newmark mixer is on. There's a switch in the back. Now, it has two channels. This record player here is attached to channel one, and this one is attached to channel two. So you want to make sure that the volume is up on the channel before you then go back to the board and you turn on Disco Mix, and you bring it up for broadcast. All right, so we have faders 10 and 11 next. Two lines, you'll see in these very faded labels, we have line in one and line in two. So those are for our two auxiliary cords that we have here at the station. They are located to the right of the board. Oh, and sometimes they're tangled like they are now, but they are quite long. But these are the two aux cords that we have. So if you want to bring in your own computer, if you want to bring in some, play something off of your phone, or you could even bring in your own DJ mixer or controller, this is how you would be plugging them in. So they are labeled. We've got labels that say one and two. So if I plugged into number two, then I would want to make sure that I'm bringing up the fader that says line in two. So that is fader 11. There we go. Now we're on the last fader on the board, and that is our telephone line. So here at CJLO, we are able to accommodate on-air interviews via telephone. So if you can't bring a guest into the room, you can definitely give them a call and interview them that way. So our broadcast phone is right here. There's always instructions here in case you forget, but the process is very simple. There's just one button you have to press before you broadcast. So of course, first you wanna make sure that you have the interview subject on the phone. And then when you're ready for it to be broadcast, you press the speaker button 
right here in orange. And then you put the phone down. I'm gonna turn that off because it's a loud noise. But once you have it on speaker, then you can go over to the board and you can press on and up and the voice of your interview subject will then be broadcast and you can communicate with them on air through the microphones. So that's every single fader that we have on the board. There's a few more things that I wanna show you before we end this video and that has to do with the volume inside the room. So of course we have two speakers. That is how you will be able to hear the show and the knob in order to adjust the volume of the speakers is this one right here that says monitor. So if you turn that up, you're home for an hour from the dark side. Of the you'll hour. hear some radio. We'll bring that down. And then this one right here is for the headphones. And if you bring that up, you'll bring up the volume of the headphones. And then this last one is for our cue. So our cue function is how we preview things before we put them on air. So say, for example, you wanted to play a record and you want to hear how it sounded before you broadcast it. What you could do is you can find the turntable fader and you press the Q button on the very top. By pressing Q, it will broadcast out of a separate set of speakers and it won't go on air. So you can take a listen before you actually put it back on air. And to adjust the volume of the Q, it's with this last little knob right here. Awesome. That's it. That's everything. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. Now remember, this was a very quick and brief overview of how to use the CJLO broadcast board. So if you have any questions, never hesitate to contact your program director. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.